Hi, my name's Tony Ward and I'm an Associate Professor at the University of the West of England in Bristol. And this is a short presentation that I've put together to explain a few ideas around the emerging topic of neuropsychotherapy. And the idea that I want to put today is that for psychological therapists in particular, uh, maybe this um, is a good idea for linking integration. Um, as I put here a bit tongue-in-cheek, is it the holy grail of psychotherapy integration? So there is now an emerging literature in neuropsychotherapy. Here, here are three key books um, recently published. So Neuropsychotherapy by Klaus Graver presents uh, a comprehensive overview of the neuropsychotherapeutic perspective, uh, as indeed does Pieter Rusov. Um, although in Pieter's book there are chapters by other authors talking about this perspective in relation to particular clinical indications. And then finally we have this recent book by Tryon um, which presents the cognitive neuroscience perspective and gives lots, outlines lots of principles that arise from a cognitive neuroscience perspective and how they can be applied to psychotherapy. Some other books that are relevant and interesting. Um, this one by Tal Talviti, uh, Freudian Unconscious and Cognitive Neuroscience. Um, Talviti argues that the Freudian ideas of the unconscious are completely compatible with the neuropsychotherapeutic perspective. Uh, Laurent, on the other hand, uh, who I believe is a past president of the French Psychoanalytic um, Association, uh, presents an alternative view, and he is very critical of the rise of cognitive science uh, within psychotherapy. So that gives you a different perspective if you are interested. And just to show that this is an area which is attracting widespread interest, um, there are various societies out there, for example, the Neuropsychoanalytic Association. Um, there is also a journal on neuropsychotherapy, if you were interested. Now, myself and my colleague Arno Plagnol, who is a professor at Paris 8 University, have done some work in this area ourselves and have an interest. So Arno wrote some years ago a very interesting book called Espace de Representation, uh, in which he outlines how a sort of cognitive neuroscience view of representation within the brain um, can be linked to the notions of Freudian defense mechanisms very productively. And the advantage, he argues, of doing that is it gives us a very rich and elaborate language and the ability to test out hypotheses in much finer detail. I myself have put forward a sort of cognitive neuroscience perspective. Here's a paper I published a few years ago um, in the Counseling Psychology Review, uh, arguing that you could model in an artificial neural network the principles of person-centered counseling and psychotherapy. And the interesting thing which emerged, I thought, from this model is that you could clearly demonstrate how phenomena such as transference and countertransference would arise from this kind of a model automatically. And myself and Arno presented some of these ideas at the Division of Counseling Psychology's annual conference last year in Huddersfield. Uh, we presented the, in the form of a poster, uh, and in particular we used a case study that Arno published with one of his colleagues um, using the example of depression to illustrate how the neuropsychotherapeutic perspective can be helpful. So the overarching principles, according to Graver, are that people strive for an overall consistency across their psychological processes and that a state of incongruence is negatively perceived by clients and motivates them very strongly for change. 
Uh, he argues that the absolute guiding principle of therapy is to provide a safe space. This is absolutely crucial. All over and above the techniques and the things we might say to clients, we have to provide them with a sense of safety from which they can then develop. Here is a perspective from Fuchs, 2004, uh, which Grauber quotes, psychotherapy may thus be regarded as a new attachment relationship which is able to regulate effective homeostasis and restructure attachment-related implicit memory. In this view, the core of therapeutic interaction lies in the effective communication mediated by bodily resonance, undertones and atmosphere, much more than by symbolic language. So that's quite interesting because it's almost saying what you say is less important than the atmosphere, the tone, etc. Grover presents this framework for understanding um, neuropsychotherapy and he suggests that clients have a, a range of basic needs. They need to feel in control, they need to avoid pain, they need to have attachment relationships and they need to enhance themselves. And this then plays out in their life and things happen, life happens, and life may drive people to approach or avoid um, issues. And in doing this, they will then develop schematic processes, motivational schemas, um, and where there is a problem, um, so for example, somebody uh, avoids pain, um, then they will develop various strategies around doing that, which may well be unhelpful. So Grauber's overriding principle is that through a sense of safety in therapy, these, um, these patterns can be uh, looked at, some clients can gain insight and work out how they might be able to move forward productively um, and approach their issues rather than avoid them. Here is a short introductory paper which you can find in the International Journal of Neuropsychotherapy. It's by Matthew Dalitz, Neuropsychotherapy Defining the Emerging Paradigm of Neurobiologically Informed Psychotherapy. So this is a nice short introductory article um, if you want to get a summary of this approach. So I mentioned earlier that there is this other book by Tryon which presents the cognitive neuroscience perspective. And he suggests that based on artificial intelligence work, there are a number of core principles that come from a cognitive neuroscience um, perspective. So, for example, uh, acknowledging the very important role of unconscious processing, um, thinking about how people's learning and memory works, looking at how people undergo transformation, looking at how behavioral patterns are activated and reactivated. And then he gives quite a number of corollary, corollary principles, such as priming, for example, part-whole pattern completion. So that's the idea, for example, that if you've established a particular way of behaving in life, of reacting to certain people that come across to you in a particular way, if you find somebody else, you come across a new person that partially reactivates that pattern of behavior, uh, it will reinstantiate and reactivate that whole way of being, which may uh, not be particularly helpful. So this is a very, very detailed and thorough book by Tryon putting forward the cognitive neuroscience perspective. Um, we could, of course, think of all kinds of pros and cons with this particular approach. So some of the pros, for example, it's very firmly rooted within the discipline of psychology. Uh, it clearly gives us, as psychologists, a unique perspective on psychotherapy. Uh, it's likely to be well received by colleagues, um, psychiatrists, for example. Um, it can allow us to think more precisely about the issues which clients bring. And it may give us increased precision in research. Uh, for example, Grauver suggests that um, not all clients with OCD or depression are alike and it might be very useful to think about the ways in which clients are different and how they might benefit from different ways of working in therapy. Some of the cons, 
um, one might question the extent to which these neuropsychotherapy principles really lead to very clear guidelines for therapists. Uh, one of my own thoughts is how some of this language might be received by clients and in particular it has that feel um, which I think many people might wonder about in terms of being reductionist it sounds somewhat reductionist having said that I know that colleagues have reported that some clients do receive this kind of outlook very well so the, the criticism then is that it's a, a little bit reductionist, uh, almost can feel as if it's treating us as some kind of automatons, perhaps. So I'm going to leave you, finally, to come to your own conclusions about whether neuropsychotherapy could be, for psychologists at least, the holy grail of psychotherapy integration. <laughs>